now at five rain on radar, but it is moving out. I'll have some local analysis and a cooler change coming in your forecast. All right, Angela, and in his own words, the confession the jury heard the Delphi murder suspect make from prison and the evidence the defense tried to present even after the judge said they could not use it. Plus, suing Indianapolis Metro Police, the two families seeking justice for their loved ones after officers killed them in two separate shootings. Also, recovering from a catastrophic fire, how Hoosiers are stepping up to help an organization dedicated to serving homeless veterans. Welcome to New York, more like welcome to Indy. That's right, Taylor Swift and thousands of Swifties are arriving right now here at the airport. And coming up, we're going to give you a look at this bejeweled welcome party. Live from Indy, you're watching 13 News. All right, everybody, a big happy hearty, happy <laughs> Halloween. This is a live look at the state fairgrounds. They're having a safe Halloween out there. Yep, these kids are just seconds away from getting some candy in their buckets. Look at all the <laughs> costumes there. Moms Aww. and dads, aw, hey, she's a cutie. <laughs> I love it when the parents dress up too. You know, they kind of, they got that theme going with the family. Yes, thankfully they are indoors because <laughs> look at this. There have been wet conditions pushing through central Indiana. Tonight, <laughs> We are tracking the weather tonight. Some of the lingering rain on your Halloween events. Perhaps there will be an impact for you. It really depends where you are in central Indiana. Hopefully you will see some dry time as you go with the kids out and about tonight. Angela's in the Weather Center tracking it all for us right now. All right, this is a tough one. Yes, when's the rain going to be pushing out? Fingers crossed, Angela. Yeah, yeah, for some it's already gone. Now for the eastern part of the state, and we've been talking about this the last couple of days, it's going to linger a little longer. Longer. So the end half of trick or treat times will be better the farther east you are. What can you expect this evening as the weather has an impact on our Halloween? We still have rain, but it is coming to an end. Even as it ends, it's going to be a little damp and a little breezy. So watch for a few slick spots. We've got lots of leaves down. And of course, check the radar before you head out the door for trick or treating. Again, the rain has ended. If you are west of Indianapolis, if you're Indianapolis east, we're still tracking a few showers. We'll dive into Marion County. A little bit of rain downtown headed toward the east side up into Lawrence and Castleton. This will last another 20 minutes or so and then start to push out. Still some rain in between Martinsville and Nineveh. It is raining in Columbus, but Bloomington, you're starting to dry out and we still have rain for the eastern part of the state. So heads up Richmond, Winchester, uh, even Muncie, Newcastle, you're dry now, but that thin line of rain to your west is moving in. You can expect the rain to end from west to east. Temperatures rel relatively comfortable. We're in the 60s through 7 o'clock. All right, thanks so much. Well, you can track the rain that Angela has been talking about as it moves to the east out of central Indiana. If you have our live Doppler 13 weather app, just download it from your app store and then check it out at the check out the interactive radar. All right, on to our top story. Some heated moments during the Delphi murders trial today. That's right. Most of it had to do with evidence in the case that surrounds the deaths of the two teens, Abby Williams and Libby German. Tonight, our senior investigative reporter Bob Siegel joins us after he witnessed all of this unfolding today in the courthouse in Carroll County. He's live tonight from Delphi. Bob, fill us in on what you witnessed. Felicia and Ann, first let me tell you that just in the last hour, the state has rested its case. But before they did, the jury got to hear the most powerful evidence yet against Richard Allen. Hearing someone say he killed two girls in his own voice, as you can imagine, that would be a very powerful thing to hear. And that's exactly what the jury heard here on day 12 of evidence presented to the jury in the Delphi murders case. The state called Brian Harshman to testify. He's a state police officer who has monitored all 700 plus Richard Allen jailhouse phone calls over the past two years. He and the prosecutor chose seven of those calls to play for the jury. In one of them, Alan called his wife and said, I did it. I killed Abby and Libby. His wife, Kathy, said, no, you didn't. 
Richard said, I did. She said, no, you didn't. Richard, yes, I did. Later, she says again, no, you didn't. Why would you say that? Richard said, what if I did? I think I did. Kathy tells her husband, they're screwing with you. They're messing with your mind. Richard said, I think I did. Kathy, no, you didn't. Why would you say that? Richard, again, because I think I did. That was in April of 2023. Then five weeks later, the jury got to hear another call that Richard made to his wife, Kathy. In that, he said, honey, she said, yes. Richard said, I may have to spend the rest of my life here. Kathy started crying at that point. Richard said, I don't understand. I just got to know everybody is still going to love me. He later said during the call, it's true, honey. Kathy said, no, it's not. He said, it's true, honey. No. Richard said, I just hope you can still love me. If I get the electric chair, she said no and started crying again. Richard said, will you be there for me? Kathy began crying louder and Richard later says again, it's okay, honey. I did it. I did it, baby. During the call, he remained calm and matter of fact. Harshman described Richard Allen's demeanor during the calls as calm, subdued, and solemn. And when prosecutor Nick McLeland asked Harshman if he recognized the voice of the bridge guy on the now famous Down the Hill video that Libby German captured on her cell phone just before the murders, Harshman said he did. He looked right at the defendant and said, it's the voice of Richard Allen. The defense team did not want the prosecutor to play only the phone calls that the jury heard today. They told uh, the judge that uh, prosecutor Nick McLeland was cherry picking specific calls that did not give a full picture to the jury. And they asked the judge to order the prosecutor to play other calls as well. The judge denied that request. But during cross-examination, Brad Rosie snuck in information from those other calls where Richard Allen said he was innocent and was having mental health problems. He snuck those in despite repeated objections. The judge seemed frustrated at that point. She had a sidebar and after that, that uh, type of questioning stopped. The state tried to play a surprise video this afternoon, video that no one was expecting. In fact, many people did not even realize existed. We're going to tell you about that video coming up at six. Emily Longnecker, she is still in the courtroom right now, and she will also be able to tell us who the first witness is as the defense now shares with the jury its side. Eagle 13 News and Felicia, back to you. All right, Bob, thanks so much. Significant developments in the case today. Lots of key evidence they're combing through. Thank you. And after 13 News at 6, Bob is sticking around for our Delphi debrief. That's right. Emily Longnecker and our legal expert also join him at 10 o'clock tonight on WTHR+. Plus. The three of them will work to move uh, into a more in-depth look at the developments in court today. You can find WTHR Plus on Apple TV, Roku, as well as Fire Stick. Developing tonight, two men killed by Metro Police in just two separate shootings last year. And now their families are suing the city for what they call the wrongful deaths of their loved ones. We've read over the new lawsuits. And our Samantha Johnson just heard from their families, and she joins us now live in studio. So... Samantha, what did they have to say? Yeah, they were emotional, as you might imagine, but they were very clear that right now they are calling for justice and accountability from the city and from the police department. They're asking for damages and a trial by jury. We're talking about two men from two different families who are now living a similar story. Um, my brother had five children who would never get to, you know, see their father again. And I just want justice. Form, so no other mother won't have to feel the pain that I feel daily. So here's what we know right now about these two shootings. The first one happened about a year ago. Darcel Edwards was killed near 25th and Columbia Avenue after a traffic stop. In the lawsuit, lawyers say he was shot in the back and was not a threat to officers. In fact, police say they never found a gun at that scene. The second shooting happened about a month later, where Leandre Houston was shot and killed by police after running from a traffic stop. But Houston wasn't the person police were after. He was a passenger in that car. The attorneys writing in this new lawsuit, quote, Houston was running for his life from a wrongful police shooting, showing his back to the officers and did not put any person or officers in imminent danger, 
nor actively resist arrest. Now we did reach out to IMPD today. They told me out of respect for the judicial process, they don't comment on pending litigation. Of course, we'll continue to keep an eye on this story and you'll hear more from those families coming up tonight at six. All right, we'll look for your continuing coverage, Sam. Thank you. Right now, a downtown not-for-profit is dealing with the damage from a devastating fire that happened just five days ago. This went down at the Helping Veterans and Their Families building that's located near 10th and Pennsylvania. Now the community is coming together to help all of those veterans impacted. HVAF tells us hundreds of Amazon boxes have been sent to their facility with items like clothing, towels, toiletries, all for the veterans and their families to help them get back on their feet. And the not-for-profit CEO says they are going to rebuild and continue to serve the community. You know, we have been around in this community for 31 years, serving the most vulnerable veterans. Manchester Apartments has been a big part of that, um, and it will be again in the future. And we've learned that the Indianapolis Fire Department and the ATF have ruled the fire accidental. Fire crews say that fire started in the attic. We've got more to come deploying to the Middle East. What hundreds of Indiana National Guard members will be doing overseas for the next year. That's all new at 530. Angela. Amory, rain is starting to move out. A cooler change is moving in. How cool in your forecast? Too close to call. That's what the latest polls still reveal about the upcoming elections. The battleground states where the two campaigns urge people to vote today. That's next.